How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame, and we are back with another FPL video and today we're going to be doing the tactics talk for Chelsea versus Arsenal. We're going to be discussing Chelsea's 2-0 win over the Gunners at the Emirates. Chelsea looking very dominant and the new signing Romelu Lukaku getting on the score sheet very early on 15 minutes into the match. We're going to take a deep dive into what sort of formations they were playing and why Arsenal were so vulnerable at the back and maybe potentially that Ben White uh, kind of start from the beginning uh, in our FPL teams if you did go with Ben White or any Arsenal players might not be the greatest decision uh, overall and it could also mean that we jump on Chelsea assets a lot sooner than we had planned I'd been planning on getting some in game week 7 onwards when they have a good run but it might be time to potentially bring some in a little bit earlier than what we'd anticipated if you haven't done so already, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it's readily available. Drop us a follow over on Twitter so you can keep up to date with all any and FPL related news, whether it be transfer news or price changes. The transfer market's been crazy. Ronaldo could be going to City, which would deeply hurt me as a Man United fan. I just hope Scott McTominay two-foots him uh, when he comes to Old Trafford on November 6th if he does go there. As well as give us a follow over on Twitch so that you can see when we go live for our preview and deadline streams. There'll be a pinned comment down below to let you know when the next stream is, which will be most likely the deadline stream uh, for game week three, which will be up one hour before uh, the FPL deadline over on Twitch. The link is down in the description below. So without further ado, let's talk about our partners for the year with Fantasy Football Scout. We have partnered up with Fantasy Football Scout for this coming Fantasy Premier League season, and they're giving you an exclusive offer. Use the link down in the description to get 20% off your Fantasy Football Scout membership. It gives you access to the exclusive members area, which has new tools such as the three-player comparison tool, as well as some old favorites such as the Rate My Team tool, the Season Ticker, and my personal favorite, the fully customizable stats tables, which you can share among other Fantasy Football Scout members powered by OptiStats. Use the link down in the description below to get 20% off your membership today. Sign up now. So here is the team sheets for both teams when they played each other on the weekend going to game week two. Arsenal typically set up in their 4-2-3-1 system under Mikel Arteta. They went pretty standard. Burnt Leno in goal. Uh, Tierney and Cedric were the fullbacks of choice in this one with no Ben White and no Gabriel. They were forced to pick Pablo Mari and Rob Holding at the back. Uh, a common double pivot uh, now that Thomas Partey is also uh, injured. Uh, he, I think he was injured in preseason with Xhaka and Lakonga in the midfield pivot. Lakonga being a new signing and a very bright young talent. And he actually impressed me um, in this game for, for parts of it. Uh, although Arsenal were just very much uh, out of the league when playing against Chelsea in this one. Uh, Saka, who's uh, come back from the Euros campaign and is slowly getting back into it, looked a little bit rusty, looked a lot better. Um, obviously, we're recording this after their game versus West Brom. Definitely looked better in the Carabao Cup. Smith Rowe, the new number 10, uh, is going to hopefully have a good campaign for them this season. Uh, Nicola Pepe hasn't lived up to his price tag, but definitely could still do so. And then Gabriel Martinelli, someone who's been a bit part player and had to play up front because Lacazette and Aubameyang had to isolate after testing positive. Um, although Aubameyang did come off the bench, which is why uh, he was able to, you see him up on the top left there. He was coming back from isolating, so he wasn't fully, fully match fit. Uh, Lacazette still had to isolate, but both of them made their appearances in the Carabao Cup game versus West Brom and both scored Aubameyang with a hat trick. Uh, Tavares is also someone who comes in as well. He came in for Kieran Tierney in a straight swap. Uh, Aubameyang uh, came in as well uh, as a uh, pretty much a straight uh, a straight swap. In a sense, Martinelli shifted out to the left um, and Aubameyang went up front. Uh, Saka had to come off uh, because he just couldn't go 90 minutes. And then Balogun comes on later on uh, for the likes of Martinelli as well, uh, shifting uh, Aubameyang out to the left. So basically... Arteta didn't really change the plan much. He only changed these these roles here. So he shifted Martinelli out to the left when Saka went off and Aubameyang went through the middle. Tavares was a straight swap for Tierney when Tierney went off injured. And then Balogun came on for Martinelli and Balogun went through the middle and Aubameyang went out to the left. So tactically, Arteta didn't change much, which is probably why they didn't see any joy in this game, to be perfectly honest. So they mainly had very, very 
little to offer going forward uh, and it's mainly due to the fact that they just have no one in they have no one getting in the box in this area when the ball is being flashed across across in and with the likes of Antonio Rudiger, Andres Christensen and even Aspilicueta they're all very capable at reading a ball in, in flight and also reading a ball and cutting it out when it's uh, played along the ground as well from a crossing position. So I think that Chelsea dealt with uh, Arsenal's offense uh, and their basically their, their, their just lack of able to create anything really uh, quite comfortably. They were never really in any threat, Chelsea. Um, and in terms of the way they, they played defensively, uh, we often found uh, situations where Kieran Tierney was getting pulled over uh, into more central areas because of Mason Mount's uh, brilliant runs, which help out in both of the goals uh, that Chelsea ended up scoring in the 2-0 no win. And it's mainly due to the fact that Lacongo gets pulled out of position. Jack is kind of in no man's land. Tierney comes across, and then Reese James is swinging way in behind uh, the likes of Saka, in the behind the likes of Tierney and Pablo Mari and Holding have to stay centrally because Lukaku is basically pinning them uh, over there. So yeah, they, they they had a they had a bit of a bad time uh, in this one. Uh, on Chelsea side, defensively they played as uh, as you would, uh, very compact. Uh, very compact uh, back three uh, when defending with uh, with Alonso uh, and Kovacic covering for help creating these like these defensive triangles here uh, with Mount and Havertz dropping back and Lukaku basically playing point man uh, you know in 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 you know in the ability to kind of hold up the ball if they were to go on the break with the wing backs obviously breaking out when they have the ability to do so. But I think it was very smart by Tuchel to pick Havertz and Mount. They're going to be more of the suppliers rather than the actual goal scorers themselves. And if they can get, you know, width from Alonso and Reese James, which they did quite a lot in this one, they could create chances for Lukaku. And we just know that Lukaku, if he gets in the box and you play in the ball, he will tap it in the back of the net, which is exactly what happened on his first goal. But also, Kovacic, I think, was probably very underrated in this one. He basically sets up, uh, you know pretty much the first goal all on his lonesome uh, with the brilliant turn, which we'll discuss in a, in a bit, uh, and just laying the ball off outside to Reese James, who has probably the easiest cross of his life on the ground with Lukaku tapping it into an empty net. Havertz also played quite well, kind of him and Mount kind of fluctuated positions, often dropping off the line. You often saw them splitting potentially at times, you know, creating overloads on one side. So if Alonso's on the touchline, you'd often see Havertz uh, and Alonso trying to get Cedric in a 2v1 type of scenario and vice versa on the opposite side. But you would also see Mount kind of mix it up a little bit, dragging Tierney in field. And we'd see that on the, on the second goal as well. But when it came to the Chelsea substitutions, I mean... Just look at the bench. So Tavares, you know, very good young player. Balogun, very good young player. Bamiang, you know, he, you know, he's going to be a great, uh, you know, he's a good goal scorer. You know, good player. He's been great in the past. But Chelsea, I mean, they bring on N'Golo Conte, Hakim Ziyech, and Timo Werner. Like they can completely change the way that their supply goes in Lukaku. So not only does Lukaku get, he can be the focal point and basically the the like the penalty box striker with Mount and Havertz supplying. But then he can be more of like the more of the supplier himself in combination with Ziyech who can curl the ball into him and Werner can run him behind so they can create all kinds of you know devastating attacks I wouldn't be surprised also if this is the situation for when they go to play Liverpool uh, this week as well have Timo Werner uh, in here also Kovacic will probably drop out and Conte will come in and be a bit more of a harrier to kind of disrupt that Liverpool uh, midfield as well and I would potentially probably see Chilwell replace Alonso just get a little bit more pace and then have look Kaku kind of hold the ball up and Liverpool's high line will be playing around here. He'll be pinned up against Van Dijk and you have Timo Werner trying to run in between the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold uh, and Matip, uh, who both aren't necessarily the quickest players. But uh, yeah, Chelsea definitely, definitely, definitely had the better of, of uh, Arsenal in this one. It's going to be very interesting to see how they play versus Liverpool. That's going to be the tactics talk spoiler for game week uh, three as well. So it's going to be very uh, intriguing to see how both managers set up because Tuchel is very calculated, system based, very controlled possession play the ball speed up the tempo when we need to use the width from the fullback solid at the back and then you have Klopp who's going to be like get the ball and go 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 
all the way until you score, basically. And they're going to take every chance to hit Chelsea on the break as their center backs aren't necessarily the quickest. Rudiger, Christensen, Aspilicueta, not necessarily the quickest, but that's where this man, N'Golo Conte, is probably uh, going to be quite key uh, in that one. It's going to be a very interesting battle as well between Lukaku uh, and Van Dijk. But Arsenal, Pablo Mari. Definitely not Virgil van Dijk for sure. And uh, we'll see in this first goal how Lukaku managed to just make Mari's nightmare just an <laughs> absolute dream come true for Lukaku, but not a dream come true for Pablo Mari. So this was the setup just before the first goal unfolded. So we had the ball with Antonio Rudiger here. We're going to use yellow for our passes here. So Antonio Rudiger gets the ball. He plays it to Mateo Kovacic, who is immediately pressed by Gabriel Martinelli, uh, as instructed to do so. I think Gabriel Martinelli had a uh, basically a, a press trigger. Anytime Kovacic got the ball or anytime Christensen got the ball, he was basically harrying them down. Anytime Antonio Rudiger got the ball, Pepe was in charge to run after him. So Kovacic gets the ball and he kind of baits him in just a little bit. He baits him in just a little bit and kind of when he receives the ball, he kind of goes a little this way with it. Martinelli kind of takes the bait. Lakonga also comes in slightly as well. And then Kovacic is able to basically spin in and around Martinelli. And then that's when he finds the space. Lukaku then, most importantly, drops off the line as Smith Road doesn't go to press. Kovacic plays the ball in and around this area. And now at this point, it's already Danger City. Lukaku is now pinned Pablo Mari. You can see that he gains five yards uh, backwards, as it were, with Pablo Mari in behind him, almost just like shielding him off with, with no trouble whatsoever. And it's at the same time when Lukaku comes in and gets this ball, Kovacic continues his run towards him. He continues his run to around this space. But the most important thing is that Mount is kind of side on with Tierney, comes from his blind side and makes a run in here. Now, what that does is it causes Tierney to run infield because he sees that basically there could be a, a, a pass that could be cut off there. If Mount spins in there and he gets in front of him, he can cut off that pass and then potentially sack us in behind uh, into this acre of space here, which would be great for Arsenal. Smith Rowe could also run if he, if he cheats there as well. So that's kind of what they do. But what actually happens is... So Lukaku comes towards the ball. Pablo Mari is pinned. The ball comes into Lukaku. Xhaka kind of waddles over as it were not really the quickest mount try uh goes to make the run in beyond kieran tierney and reese james is in acres of space here and that's where the ball can be basically played in uh havertz is kind of holding off holding uh no pun intended there alonso's kind of occupying cedric as it were so then lukaku then lays the ball off to kovacic in and around this area now, immediately, Xhaka tries to see the danger. Kieran Tierney's already at a point where he's trying to cut off the cut off the pass to, to Mason Mount. But what they don't see is this in behind. Now, Saka could be tracking this uh, to help out the likes of Tierney when Tierney comes in field. But I think it's just the fact that Xhaka's not close to the ball uh, and Tierney gets pulled in field. And it's kind of a combination because Mari should just basically step off Lukaku, give him a bit of space, let him turn, and then assess him at that point. When you let Lukaku use his strength and power, which is one of his best, if not his best attribute, you're kind of already shooting yourself in the foot in a sense so then Kovacic plays a beautiful pass into the space uh for Reese James to run onto who makes a run in towards the box and the way what happens is the ball is then played out so Reese James kind of gets it in this position Mount's making a run in this area Tierney's trying to follow him Saka can't get back in time Xhaka can't get back in time Pablo Mari kind of falls over around this area and Lukaku's got a goal side of him which is already danger zone as it is holding tries to see off Lukaku uh, and tries to shepherd him at, in a sense but can't get across in time because Mari's fallen over and lost his man Havertz would be at the back post as well Cedric follows Alonso Kovacic ends up around around here as well as a Smith Rowe and, and Jorginho and at this point it's already danger zone Leno's here Reese James gets to basically the the edge of the 18 here Lukaku's goal side and I mean just just put it in here and that's exactly what Reese James does straight in there and Lukaku taps it into an empty net just very very straightforward stuff and it all comes from the fact that 
what we didn't see from Lukaku at Man United, because that's not how they wanted him to play, was his back to goal. And he learned that. He had actually had an interview when he came to, came to Chelsea and he said, yeah, I learned that uh, when you play back to goal, you not only score more goals, but you also assist as well, as well as running in behind. So I'm just going to do that. It just makes more sense. And Lukaku pinned Pablo Mari, making it unable for him to go anywhere, basically. Kovacic beats the press by himself with a very fantastic dribble, then follows his run through and past Smith Rowe and in front of Xhaka, then Spins it around Jacka with Saka not being able to cover. Tierney coming in. Reese James is in acres of space. Lukaku just bulldozes over Pablo Mari. Holding can't come across in time because he's worried about Havertz. Mount's already occupied uh, Tierney and Xhaka's eyes. And Lukaku's just wide open uh, for the tap in. As easy as you like. You're going to see many of goals. I mean, you're probably going to... If Reese James uh, and Lukaku stay fit and they play game in, game out, Reese James could have as many assists as Trent did that one season. I think when he had like 14 or 15 or whatever it was. Reese James is going to have a boatload of assists. Because there's going to be plenty of goals like that. They could do this again low block teams they can do this against really good teams that um you know play a high line it doesn't matter if you give reese james this much space him and lukaku are going to burn you and this is also going to happen on the left hand side too with, with ben chilwell it can easily happen because you can have Jorginho do the exact same thing kind of s slowly you know kind of pretend like he's dwelling on the ball then play it quickly over to the likes of Christensen who can slot it out wide to Chilwell who's in behind and then he can swing it across for Lukaku as well or even play a through ball into Timo Werner who can then play it across to Lukaku all those different combinations can definitely happen and this is just one of them that we're going to probably see a lot of uh, this season now with the first goal out of the way let's take a look at Basically, a similar situation uh, is a little bit closer to goal, but I think it still shows a concern for Arsenal that Tierney gets pulled out of position. The midfield pivot is nowhere to be seen, and Arsenal need to shore up this defensive frailties. Otherwise, they're going to be down fast at the bottom of the table come the middle of the season. Now, this is the setup just before the second goal was scored by Reese James. So basically, the ball gets fed into uh, Marcus Alonso. Uh, Havertz plays it into him and then makes his run uh, in in the channel as if he's going to overlap. Now, if Alonso had a you know a right foot, basically, he could turn and he could put the ball, like he can dink it into this space, forcing holding to come across, and Lukaku could then probably beat Pablo Mari again. But they have an even fancier way of beating them uh, in this scenario. So what happens? So Alonso gets the ball, kind of has to backtrack a little bit, tries to get it on his left foot. But what it actually does is it forces Cedric and Smith Rowe to try to press him to see, hey, look, Alonso, he, he's a little bit slower on the ball. We can maybe get to him. So how does this benefit Chelsea? Well, Havertz then drops off the line here. Alonso plays the ball into him, and Havertz is kind of pinned a little bit on the touchline. Lakonga uh, and Cedric uh, come across again. Smith Rowe doesn't track Alonso, uh, and Alonso then gets in and around. Havertz kind of plays a little dink pass that, like, kind of... He kind of chops it with his foot, almost like how you would do like the, the, the Ronaldo chop uh, when you're running down the line. But he kind of does it with the instep of his foot and it like pops the ball around them. Uh, and then Alonso gets the ball in this position now. Where this is dangerous because Alonso's in a, a lot of space. You got three three V2s just been just been beaten. Xhaka's more centrally. And then you have the likes of uh, Kovacic potentially running into this space. Uh, you have a uh, holding, kind of seeing the danger and seeing that Lukaku's coming across. So Lukaku ends up coming across, which pulls Pablo Mari because Pablo Mari is apparently instructed to be chained to him uh, like a ball and chain. Uh, Mount comes across as well, beating Tierney uh, in, in a foot race, in a sense. Uh, and uh, yeah... This is where it kind of all unfolds. Jack is just not quick enough. And you can see already, if you're just, you know, just looking, look at all the space that Reese James has to run into. So Mount's come across, Lukaku's come across, Alonso's running in field, and then he plays a pass across into Lukaku, who dummies the ball to Mason Mount, who then, as Tierney tries to address him, he then whips it around him, and then Reese James is basically has a free run in on goal. So how does it unfold? So Alonso's got the ball here. He's beaten the man because uh, Havertz is great 
Great pass. Holdings come across. Lukaku's made the run. The ball goes through Lukaku. He plays the dummy. Mason Mount here gets it in, in the space. And by this time, Tierney's come across. And he's just too little too late. And Reese James is literally here just absolutely in the best possible position you could be in uh, at this point in time. And again, Saka, unfortunately, is not in a position to defend for it. Xhaka is behind the play. Uh, Smith Rowe was pulled out of position. Lakonga's way across the other side of the field. And then Mount just spins the ball into the path of Reese James, who then gets the ball, darts into the box with it, and then Leno, no chance. Uh, James blasts it past him. So... I think that it's a fantastic, fantastic play that unfolds here. Uh, Lukaku's dummy is excellent. I think Havertz does extremely well on the touchline uh, to get the ball into Alonso. Mount, then quick feet, one touch from out under his feet, wraps it around into Reese James, perfectly weighted pass, and then bang, strikers finish into the uh, side netting or like halfway up the goal Leno no chance of stopping it and that was on all day for Chelsea mainly in the first half and they kind of cooled off in the second half but yeah Arsenal just very very defensively lacking uh in this area now Kieran Tierney's also uh went off injured whether it was cramp or something like that we're not uh, sure as of yet um whether he'll be back uh for the game versus Man City but him having injury problems is, is a big issue and you also notice that it's always down Xhaka's side as well he can't come across quickly enough to cover the likes of Mason Mount or these infield midfielders like Kovacic or Jorginho, whoever's in the space, and whoever's the left-sided attacker isn't able to help because Xhaka is so far out of position. And Tierney knows that he's out of position, so he has to come across to try to see if he can cover. So it is a like a communication sort of thing, but it's just basic fundamentals. Like if the ball, if you see the danger coming across, Xhaka needs to come across, Saka needs to follow the wing back, and Tierney can come across and help double or cut the pass off. And they just didn't do that time and time again. I think Lukaku had a crazy number of shots in this game. He could have easily scored more. Uh, Reese James had a few chances himself. I think he had four shots shots four chances created which is crazy uh for a defender and yeah both of them could be fpl assets in our team very very shortly if they were to go and do a number on liverpool as well mason mount also was excellent in this game and i think that he could also be for 7.5 million just kind of the one that ticks along a little six pointer here a little seven pointer here occasionally we'll get a goal and an assist in more open games but we'll slowly tick along for that mid price and i think that chelsea as a team could just be devastating, uh, you know, with clean sheets and just constant attacking returns, constantly getting wins. And with their squad depth, I mean, look, they brought on arguably the best defensive midfielder in the world or ever, if you want to call it that. Uh, Hakim Ziyech, a fantastic created left-footed player that just creates different angles to cross from. Uh, and then Timo Werner, someone who has blistering pace that can also supply for Lukaku as well. Now Timo Werner doesn't have to take the shot. He could just be like, oh, Lukaku's a cross goal. I'm going to just lay it across him and he'll tap it in the goal. I don't have to score. I just have to be the runner for him. Kind of like how Latoura Martinez was for Inter Milan uh, with Lukaku as a front two pairing. So that's going to do it for the tactics talk. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Was Arsenal's defense shambolic or was Chelsea's offense just that good? I think that Chelsea were just too much for Arsenal and I think just the subs alone show the strength and depth that Chelsea have and uh, look forward to the uh, Liverpool versus Chelsea tactics talk that's going to be either during the international week or you know probably probably on the weekend on, on the Sunday or something like that so a week Sunday so make sure to look out for that which is why you should stay locked in on all our socials the links will be down in the description below but yeah that's going to do it for game week two tactics talk and that's going to do it for our Arsenal versus Chelsea Game Week 2 Tactics Talk. If you haven't done so already, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and turn those notification bells on so you get the content as soon as it is readily available. Drop us a follow over on Twitter so you can keep up to date with any price changes, FPL transfer news, FPL news in general, and everything in between. As well as give us a follow over on Twitch so you can see when we go live for our preview and deadline streams. We will be doing a deadline stream this Saturday, one hour before the FPL deadline for the Game Week 3 deadline so make sure to check the pin comment down below for more details on that and lastly use the link down in the description below to get 20 percent off your fantasy football scout membership it runs out on sunday this offer so make sure to take advantage of it the link is in the description below 
you know, help elevate your FPL game. Thank you all for watching. And until the next one, take care.